What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at Maps in Go. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to look at Maps in Go. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for a one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at Maps in Go. And a map in Go is the same as a dictionary in Python or a hash in Ruby. And it's just a way to keep track of key value pairs, right? So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and then Git Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Go series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Okay, there are a couple different ways you can create a map in Go. And the main way is to just define it. So let's go var and let's just call this pizza. Now this is going to be a map. And then here, you need to define exactly what kind of data type you're going to use for both the key and the value. So here, in these brackets, we define the data type for the key. And this is going to be a string. And outside of here, we define the data type for the value. And this is also going to be a string. So it's going to be like uh, var pizza equals map. And then here we can say key type. And here we can say value type. And then we use curly brackets, and then you just, you know, define your thing. So here we have our curly brackets. So here we can say, you know, John, and you separate the key value pairs with a colon. And so John likes pepperoni, go. And then each set of key value pairs you separate with a comma. So I'm putting this on separate lines. Obviously, you don't have to, but you know, you're going to want to. And let's say Mary, and she likes cheese. And then finally, let's say Tim, and Tim likes a mushroom. Now, you're going to have to bring your closing curly bracket up here to the end of this thing. If you put it down here, you're probably going to get an error. So it's a little weird. So that's how you create a map in Go. It looks very similar to a Python dictionary or a Ruby hash, right? So to call this thing, we could do many different ways. Let's just go fmt.println and let's just call the whole thing. Let's go ahead and save this. I've called this maps.go. Head over to our terminal. I'm in my C Go stuff directory and let's run the command go run maps.go. And when we do, it just prints out the map of our key value pairs. So, okay, that's how you print out the whole thing, which is not all that useful. How do you print out specific items from our map? Well, in the normal way, you would just go print line, and then we would want to call pizza, and then you use your square brackets to call whatever key you want. So if we want to see what John's favorite pizza is, we would type in John, right? Head back over here, run this guy again. It's going to print out pepperoni. Pretty simple. Okay, so that's the main way you could create a map. You could also use shorthand. Remember our shorthand for most things like creating variables and arrays and things. But we could just call, you know, toppings and then use that little shorthand operator, you know, and then it's exactly the same. All right. So we would go, you know, string and string and inside of here, you know, whatever, John, colon, pepperoni, right? So that's shorthand. I'm not going to run this because, you know, we already know what's going to happen here. But uh, you can do it like that as well. So once we've created our map, we can change items in the map. So if I wanted to uh, change an item, we could go pizza. And let's say we wanted to change John's from pepperoni. We just set it equal to whatever we want to change it to. So I'm going to change it to peppers. John likes peppers now, right? So here we can fmt dot print line and call this guy right here. To see what it was, because before it was pepperoni, we're printing we're printing that onto the screen. Now we're changing it and printing it again. So hopefully this will change. Head back over here, run this guy. Typo. F M T. There we go. Head back over here, run this guy again. See the first time it says pepperoni, then we've changed it now to peppers. So that's pretty simple. We can also delete items. So let's say delete items. To do that, we would just call the delete function and then pass in our map name, and then just call the item we want to delete. So if we wanted to delete Tim, we would just call Tim. So here we could come up here and let's grab the entire thing again and print it to the screen to make sure that that was actually deleted. We need to prove it to ourselves. And so you see the first time there is Tim, the second time Tim is gone, he has been deleted. So that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now, what else would we like to do? We probably want to know how to iterate over maps. And it's pretty simple. We just run a for loop and you could call your key and your value. 
Now, these are just variables. You could call them anything you want. You could call them key. You could call it K and V, X and Y, Bob and Tim, whatever you want, but they're calling the key and the value. So I'm going to call them key value. And then we use our shorthand and we use our range function like we learned several videos ago. We want to range over our pizza. And then what do we want to do? Well, let's just print each key value to the screen. So let's go print line and I'll just call the key and the value. All right, so if we save this, add back over here, run this guy one more time. We see we're iterating John Peppers, Mary Cheese, and we're just printing each key value pair. You could, you know, probably leave out, if you wanted to leave out the key, for instance, this is going to give you an error because we didn't use our underscore. Remember, we learned that a few videos ago, All right? Clear the screen, run this guy again. And we just get peppers and cheese. And you could do the same thing in reverse, right? You could put the key instead and get rid of the value using the underscore. And then here you would just call your key, right? But I want to call both. So I'm going to put this back in here. Run this guy one more time just to make sure we're back where we want to be. And we see John Peppers, Mary Cheese. And that's all there is to it. So those are maps in Go, very similar to dictionaries or hashes any key value pair groupings in any other programming language you've probably seen and uh, not much to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeby.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeby.com and I'll see you in the next video.